leaders of international finance, heads of state, high public officials, were meeting behind armed guards and closed doors on Jekyll Island, sealed off. What are these powerful internationalists doing? And why is it so secret? Why do they have armed guards outside? Why is it sealed off? The newspapers totally ignore it. Not a word. Total blackout in the United States. Since then, I've never stopped pursuing Bilderberg or the whole international gangster organization led by Rockefellers and Rothschilds as they manipulate the world for their own selfish interest. About 10 have come in. They've been coming in slowly uh, in typically big black cars with what appears to be bulletproof glass and we've got a few pictures of some of the people. Uh, we're being kept well back from the building by an awful lot of uh, security people. But, you know, there'll be more security as this thing develops. Again, just a reminder to stay off the front, okay? I am, I am. Th you. This is the line. We check with the city. Thank you. Oh, yeah, there's one right there. Hi. Hey, we're not your property. We're not your slaves. We're going to defeat the New World Order. The New World Order is going to be defeated. You realize that? I'm glad you did. Always does throughout history. Now, I think what is very difficult for most people to understand is how such a small group of 125 men and a few women control a population base of 6 billion people. Actually, it's much easier than you think. These people work on what I call a systemic methodology, meaning that you take a pie, just imagine, you take an apple pie and you slice this apple pie into lots of very small pieces, and you put in front of each one of these pieces your men or women of trust, and by controlling this individual, you control an entire organization. For example, if you take Paul Wolfowitz, who runs the, uh, the World Bank, uh, through him you can control the entire organization. You don't need to control what the dishwasher or the toilet cleaner thinks or does or believes in. You just need to control what he does and what he believes in. And what he does will permeate the entire organization. And that's how you control with a very, very small power base an entire global population of, of 6 billion people. Bilderberg is making great progress toward a world government. They have uh, created a super state in Europe called the European Union. They are intent on creating a Western Hemisphere Union called the American Union. NAFTA is to be expanded into every country in this hemisphere. As NAFTA expands, it will take on the role of the American Union. And only an educated, informed public can stop them in their tracks. In 2005, an arrangement between Canada, Mexico, and the United States was made. This arrangement, unannounced to the public, unregulated by Congress, merges the United States, Mexico, and Canada into one entity, erasing all borders. It's called the North American Union, and you might want to ask yourself why you've never heard of this. In fact, there is only one mainstream reporter who has actually heard of and has had the courage to cover this issue. The Bush administration's open borders policy and its uh, decision to ignore the enforcement of this country's immigration laws is part of a broader agenda. President Bush signed a formal agreement that will end the United States as we know it. And he took the step without approval from either the U.S. Congress or the people of the United States. It's a deal that few have even heard of. It's being done again by very few people at the very top on behalf of the investment class, but the working class of people, uh, political officials across our country from communities, uh, from cities and so forth, they don't know anything about this. This isn't some trade agreement. It is a total removal of sovereignty from these countries, which will also result in a completely new currency called the Amero. Fall. Um, apart from that, I think one thing people who are dollar-based need to focus on is the Amero. That's the one thing that nobody's talking about that I think is going to have a big impact on, uh, on everybody's life in Canada, the U.S., and uh, Mexico. The Amero is the proposed new currency for the North American community, which is being uh, developed right now between Canada, the U.S., and Mexico to make a borderless community much like the EU, and uh, the dollar, Canadian dollar, U.S. dollar, and the Mexican peso replaced by the Amero. By default of this agreement, the American Constitution will eventually be obsolete. You would think that a situation like this would be on the cover of every major newspaper. That is until you realize that the people who are behind this movement are the same people behind the mainstream media, 
and you are not told what you're not supposed to know. The North American Union is the same concept as the European Union, the African Union and the soon to be Asian Union and the same people are behind all of them. And when the time is right, the North American Union, the European Union, the African Union and the Asian Union will be merged together, forming the final stages of a plan these men have been working on for over 60 years. A one world government. A globalist is someone who believes in globalism, and globalism essentially is uh, the desire for one world government, one world military, one world economy, um, which on a broad philosophical basis may not be that bad. But the problem is, is that we are being pushed into globalism by secrecy and by deceit and uh, nobody's getting a chance to actually consider the ramifications or consider the methodology that's being used to push us into this globalization. Uh, and that leads to the $64,000 question. Let's assume that these globalists, and they make no s secret about their desire for one world economy, one world government. Let's assume that they're successful. What is our guarantee that some new Hitler-like tyrant won't gain control of that worldwide mechanism. The, the driving force behind globalism is just plain old socialism. Because if they want to control every person in the world, if they're going to take care of you from cradle to grave, if they're going to take care of the education system, they're going to take care of the health system, all of that requires central administration. And the wealthy elite who have the money and the power know that if they can create a one, one world global social system that they can control the central authority. In other words, world control, world domination. The, one of the oldest desires in, in the history of the world going all the way back to Alexander the Great. The way that this can be done with a very few people, at the peak, that is, is because if you look at every organization today, be it uh, a university, a school, a government, a secret society, anything, a multinational company, business of any kind, they're structured as a pyramid, which works like this. In any organization, uh, you've got a very, very few people at the peak of the pyramid. That very few people know exactly what that organization is about, what its real agenda is, what it's really trying to achieve. The further you come down from that peak in any organization, you're meeting more and more and more people who know less and less and less and less about what the organization's really about. They only know their part. The CIA call this compartmentalization, keeping from everyone else in the pyramid how what they're doing in apparent innocence links in with what other people are doing in apparent innocence to produce a very sinister pattern. The Freemasons are a classic example of this. Uh, when you say um, that the Freemason secret society is involved, uh, people think that you must be saying that every Freemason wants to manipulate the world to global dictatorship. Utterly ridiculous. Of course they don't. But if you, if you look at the Freemason structure, the vast overwhelming majority of Freemasons in the world they never get higher than the bottom three levels of degree, the overwhelming majority. But in the Scottish rite of Freemasonry, which pervades much of world politics, particularly in America and other areas, there's another 30 degrees above that to the 33rd degree, which the vast majority of Freemasons never get near. And there's another 13 levels not officially accepted to exist, which some people call Illuminati degrees, which at that level, the Freemason secret society is in a different universe to the part where the vast majority of Freemasons